Hi everyone, so today we're going to be talking about constructors. This will be a continuation of an earlier discussion on constructors in Java. All right, so we're up to here right now. And if you want to look at more of this sort of information in detail, chapter six, classes and objects in the beginning Java 8 fundamentals book. There's a series of books. This one right here pointed to by either of these two URLs will do the trick. All right, so constructors. Constructors, the purpose of defining a class is to be able to create instances of, of it. So basically we wanna make objects from classes. To instantiate a class, that is to construct a, uh, an object from the class, we use constructors. So a constructor declares input parameters, all right, and uses input parameters to initialize some or all of its attributes. So basically what, what we're doing with it is we are constructing the object with certain uh, guidelines in mind. All right, so what would, would this kind of look like? Well, if we've got a class, so you can see it's a public class and it's a class named person. So that's the blueprint for objects we'll be creating. Um, in it, you can see these attributes. We have attributes of age, that's an integer. And we have nationality as a string and weight and height as double precision floating point numbers. Now, that's the beginning. So you've got this sort of first line right here that ends with the curly brace. Then you got these variable type things right here. And then after that, you have this funny little thing right here that starts with another curly brace that's inside of this curly brace, okay? And that's the constructor. And so what it's basically saying is this is how you call the uh, class to create the object. So we're showing that uh, we say we, we use the word person, which is from here right here. And then we say that there's an input parameter there and another input parameter there. And then we say what we do with those. And in this case, we are taking that input parameter right there and that one right there. And we're assigning the first one to age, which was right here, and nationality, which was right there. So we're taking the stuff that's the input and assigning it uh, or setting up those inputs with respect to the internal characteristics, the internal attributes, the internal variables of the class. All right, but look at this. We have one constructor and now we have another constructor because there are different ways of constructing objects. So the very first one, we initialize the, uh, the person based on an, an age and a nationality. In the second case, we initiate things by looking at the initial weight and the initial height, okay, and assigning those to these two internal variables, right? Oh, but there's a third one. Here, we set up internal parameters, or we have internal, or sorry, we input parameters right here, four of them, and those four will connect to all four of those internal uh, variables for the, for the class. Okay, so take, let's take a look at another example. Here we're looking at the class point, and point has two internal attributes, x and y. So we can have one uh, constructor, this one right here, where we take the initial value of x and the initial value of y, and we're going to assign those input parameters to those internal variables x and y. But we can have another type of constructor, okay? Here we're declaring something called, a, we've got a, a parameter called axis, which is based on character, so we could choose like x or y. Um, as characters, and we could say what the distance is along that particular axis. That'd be another way of declaring or setting up an, a, a point object. So we say if axis is x, so basically we're saying, you know, that was x or maybe it was y, and then we say x is equal to the distance variable like that, or we say that if the axis, the axis was equal to the character y, then we're going to set up the y distance, and then basically we'll have to use the, uh, the one that isn't being initialized will be set up to its default value, maybe zero, okay? And if we said Z or something like that, we'd say, oh no, there was an error right there. That'd be another constructor. So we can have different types of constructors, different ways of setting up an object um, uh, in, in terms of these different classes, in ter terms of these different blueprints. A little bit like saying that if you had a blueprint for a house, you could build it, um, it'd have the same shape, but you would build it with bricks, or you'd build it with one type of lumber or another type of lumber. And so basically you're going to get the same house in the end, or you're going to have some basic house in the end, but it will have some variation to it. And so you can have these different constructors based on 
the materials you're going to use, the input parameters you're going to use, etc. So here's some important points to, to take away from this. For each class, you can define one or more constructors. Uh, the names of all constructors must match the class name. No return types need to be specified for the constructors. Each constructor must have a distinct list of input parameter types. Each parameter that is used to initialize an attribute must have a matching type. And the body of each constructor specifies how some or all attributes may be initialized. It doesn't have to be all the attributes, it could be just some of them. All right, and there you go, a little continuation on constructors. Mm -hmm.